what is up everybody welcome back for part two of cf 2.0 step by step if you haven't watched the last video yet go into my videos and find part one that will show you how to do the first thing i recommend doing which is setting up a custom domain in step two here for our brand new cf 2.0 account we are going to set up something called payments.ai so payments.ai is sort of what allows us to process payments inside of ClickFunnels 2.0. At least at the time of this recording, you have to create an account with them in order to be able to set up any kind of order form. Now you might be asking, well, what about Stripe? What about PayPal? What about other payment integrations? We can connect those to CF 2.0, but they have to be connected as gateways onto payments.ai. Now, when we do that, when we connect it as a gateway to payments.ai, we do pay an extra 1% of every uh, transaction to payments.ai. But if we use payments.ai as our gateway to actually process payments, we don't pay any additional um, transaction fee, just your typical fees, same exact fees actually, at least as far as I can tell, as you would with something like Stripe, which is super popular for people in the funnel world. So we'll look at all of that, but really just to kick things off, here's what you need to do. You need to come into your account, go down to this little icon right here that says Payments AI. So if we click on this, it's going to take us to a page that says, hey, you can accept all online payments today, get started. So this automatically takes us to the starting point of the account creation. So Payments AI, does a lot of really cool things that I think make it stand out from something like Stripe or PayPal. And it's mostly to do with automating things that happen when someone pays you, hence the name payments.ai. So we can do things like uh, create dunning rules so that say you have someone on a subscription plan and a payment fails, you can say, wait X amount of time before charging again, wait X amount of time, and then use a different gateway that we have connected. We can also connect multiple gateways. So I can connect Payment AI, Stripe, PayPal, and I can set rules to say, okay, you know, 33% of the time use payment, payments.ai, the other 33% of the time use Stripe, the other 33% of the time use PayPal. So it's really awesome about this is like, we don't have to keep all of our money tr going through one platform. If you've been doing this a while, if you've been selling things online for a while, you know, it's really easy you know, for PayPal or whoever to just lock your account for no reason. You have to go through this whole back and forth with them. With this setup, if that happens, you know, we can just say, okay, stop sending any percentage to that integration and start sending it to this other one. That way our business doesn't have to stop while we're disputing accounts and things like that. I know personally I've had that happen with PayPal and it, turned into a giant fiasco where the only way I could get my account reinstated was I had to prove my residency residency within Canada. And then I had to um, use a, um, a tax receipt to prove that I lived in Canada. And then um, I had actually moved a couple of years prior to that and hadn't done my taxes for a couple of years. So I had to do like multiple years worth of tax filings just so I could prove to them that I was who I was and get all of my money out of my PayPal account. And you know, luckily for me, I had Stripe and other things already on my pages that were selling things. But if I had had payments.ai and I had already had set up, I could just say, you know, turn off PayPal, send all the traffic to this, and it would have saved me tons and tons of work. So a lot of really, really cool things we can do with this. I'll show you a few as we get this set up. But right off the bat, it's going to ask you where you live. And basically, if on this form, like you can say almost any country here, I believe. I believe almost every country is supported. I'm going to do Canada because that's where I live. But it does ask you this question. It says, confirm I do not sell any products uh, on the restricted items list. If you click on this, it'll show you a list of restricted items. So if I say yes here, I'm not selling any of those items, it will allow me to use payment.ai as the gateway to process payments. If I say no, though, I can still set up an account. It'll actually ask me for way less information about myself. I can still set up the account, but I won't be able to use Payments AI to actually process payments. I'll have to connect to Stripe or PayPal or one of the other gateways that can connect to the back end of this, which we'll see here in a little bit. So just something to consider if you're selling one of these items on here. 
um, you will end up paying an additional 1% just for having, you know, your payment integration connected as a gateway to payment AI. So um, there we go. I confirm. I'm going to say I have read the privacy policy in terms and conditions and click next step. All right. Then it's going to say, hey, there's all this information you need to gather. So business information, owner information, billing information. If you do not have or don't wish to provide these documents this time, you may still submit the application. So you can still submit it without some of these pieces. Um, I've been able to get mine to go through basically just using myself as my business on a couple of test instances. So don't worry if you don't have everything. I believe someone on their team actually like manually reviews these and says, all right, this seems okay. And um, even if you don't have some of the info, they will potentially let you set up. So for me, uh, I'm going to put funnel chats as my name, DBA, or if you're doing business, if you have a business name, but you do business as a slightly different name, you can put that in there. Um, I'm going to put my email address. And I have tried to set up multiple accounts across different workspaces and you can only use an email address once something to consider here. Business website. Uh, should have all the compliance stuff. So it's going to be like description, legal name, refund policy, all that, all the policies need to be on the page. Another reason why I wanted to connect the domain first is we're going to need it on here. Um, if you don't have a page, we'll, we'll get into this in a further video, but just set up a landing page that has a privacy policy and everything at the bottom and just say like full website coming soon. And you could skip ahead to that video if you don't have that yet. All right, so I agree. Put your phone number. This is going to be um, blurred. Tax ID. So at least in Canada, I think this should be your social insurance number. Actually, I don't even know what mine is. I may have to pause for a second. All right, so I found my social insurance number. I have that as my tax ID, credit card statement name, expected annual sales volume. I've put this at like $1 and it's still gone through. I'm going to put like, I don't know, 100,000. We're a startup company, business type. So it's different in Canada, but... I we don't have limited liability coming. I'm going to put private corporation or sole proprietor, actually. Business category, be different for everyone. I'm going to put mine as education, description of products or services. And business registration number, if you have one. to try that okay so that's going to be blurred for you guys but um i have done this before with just like a few ones in business registration number and also with my tax id as um other numbers as well and it has gone through for me but it was pretty clear that i was using testing numbers so i would say at least have your tax id it's going to help when you go to file your taxes anyways if you don't have a business registration number yet try putting just some ones and stuff like that DBA is required, apparently. So I would put just the same as your business name. Okay, so now your business address, put whatever that is for you. Owner information, so it might um, be different if you're setting this up for someone else. Again, all these fields are going to be blurred. Government ID number. I wonder if that's even required. It is required. So I'm going to put my social insurance number. 
All right. Uh, owner address, use business address, use different. I'm going to leave it the same. Billing. So this is really important. Choose the currency that you're going to be using. Um, I have, I saw one person who had this at the CID and then in their account, it was in USD and it was causing some confusion for them. But, um, theoretically, like if I get paid out in CAD in process transactions in USD should pay less, uh, conversion fees if they pay me out in CID instead of my bank converting it. Okay. Then we have all of our banking info, which I'll have to pause here to find. All right. So I got all of my banking info in there. It's obviously blurred out for you. And then you'll see minimal payouts. So they actually only tell you what the minimum payout can be in USD or CID. So it's like $35 or 50 CID. If you're another currency, you have to do the math there, I guess. Um, but yeah, I guess I'm always going to make that the minimum. That would be something I don't like compared to Stripe where they just pay you out. This is like, I think your first payments after like a seven day holding period. And then they also make you hold a reserve amount for refunds, which if this has to be at least 150 CAD, then, um, I'm not going to get any payouts until I make over 150. If it's always holding that 150 inside of there. Which, you know, if you're a bigger company, not a big deal, but if you're smaller, that is annoying. But remember, we can always just connect Stripe or something instead. Anyways, it's 1%, which is very minimal, which I'll probably end up doing. And we'll hit next step here. Then we have document verification. So they want us to use some type of document. If you do not wish to do it, you can still submit the application. I'm not going to do that right now. Yeah, that's, that's a lot. So we'll see what happens without it. Yes, we're going to skip that. And then we just get a summary. That's all going to be blurred. We're going to say, I've read all this and hit submit. So it's setting up my account. And it says your account was successfully set up. I'm just going to click here to go to my dashboard and you'll see right away, like you'll get tutorials and everything. I'm going to skip this for this video, but you'll see it's processing payment AI as a gateway. So the gateway is what's actually going to process payments here for us. So if we want to use payment AI and not anything else. We have to wait for that to go through my, my uh, tests here lately have been going through super fast. I haven't done a full account set up like we just did though in a little while. So we'll see how long it takes. Shouldn't be too long. They may require me to submit those documents. I don't know yet. So we'll wait and see. Maybe I'll get a notification saying like, Hey, you have to confirm this info. But even while this is waiting, I can go ahead and connect Stripe. So Stripe is my favorite payment gateway to set up on almost any platform. This is also PayPal, Coinbase, Klarna, NMI. Tons of different ones we can set up here, which is really cool. We have tons of flexibility, but just to show you, I'm going to set up Stripe right now because it's so easy to connect. So I'm going to go here. We're going to connect Stripe as a gateway. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and log into my Stripe account here. If you don't have an account set up on Stripe yet, you go through a pretty similar process at stripe.com to what we just went through with payment AI. And then you're just saying, yeah, that's the account I would like to connect. Click on connect. And then boom, it just sends us back in and it's connected. See the additional fee is right here. Um, so from here, we'll open this pricing policy. There's a whole pricing policy that they have where we can We'll take a quick look at that here in a moment, but I'm just going to close here. You'll see also if there's a gateway that you like to use that isn't on here yet. It seems like payment AI is pretty new and they're taking requests. So you can, you know, when I first signed up for this, the only one was Stripe and now we have all these additional ones already. So you can request additional ones on here, use those for your funnels, which is amazing. Uh, but if we go click back on payments AI here, it'll take us to that homepage and you can see, look, my payment AI account actually 
went through. So I didn't even use any of those verification documents. Maybe once I start making lots of money in here, it might ask me to do that. I'll let you guys know if it does. Um, but look, and it'll even tell you once uh, our minimum payout is reached, it'll tell you when the next payout is coming through. So now I have two different gateways connected. And if I want to say only send a certain percentage of payments to one and a certain percentage of payments to the other, we have to set up some fancier rules. Okay, so to set up the routing rules, which is one of my favorite features on here, all you do is go up to your account and then to settings. And in settings, something that I'll end up connecting here eventually is under taxes. You'll see you can actually connect to tax jar, which is an awesome integration that helps you with filing your taxes and everything from all the payments you get. Super, super awesome integration, highly recommend it. You can connect that directly to here, which is cool. You can um, set up uh, different system emails, which is awesome. And under the account here, you'll see under document verification, it actually won't pay me out until I verify my identity with some documents, but I can at least get set up and start receiving payments before I even uh, go through the hassle of taking those, uh, taking pictures and everything for that. So pretty standard, like, um, I know with PayPal to set up a business account, I had to do some pretty similar things to that. I know it seems weird at first, but when you sell out stuff online, you kind of just get used to that. But anyways, in here under account settings and gateways, and here's where you can set up automation rules. So right now we have gateway routing. And if I want to add additional uh, rules to this, like my default rule right now is just 100% is going to payment AI. Um, I can either edit this or add an additional one. So. Um, you'll see to have these fancier rules, you do pay an additional 0.5%, which again is minimal, um, for, for what this is doing for it. I don't know of any other service that can do something quite like this. And I'll, you'll see there's rules we can set up for subscriptions as well, which is amazing. So I haven't done this in a little while, but let's try, let's try editing the default one here. Um, it looks like wait, you can do round Robin or you can do weighted random. So each time a rule is triggered, the transition will randomly choose a gateway account based on the weighted distribution. Okay. So right now it's like hundred percent that, but look, I can do 50% and 50% Stripe and hit save. Now 50% of my transactions are going to be processed through payment AI and 50% will be processed by Stripe. That easy. And I know that like that doesn't seem like much, but especially when you have a funnel that's doing sales at high pace with lots of traffic, this is a game changer. Same thing once you have a ton of subscriptions. I don't have any subscriptions set up right now, but I can set up reminders for trials, for reminders for credit cards and subscription dunning, which I haven't got to play around with too much just yet. But the way that it was explained at Funnel Hacking Live is amazing, right? It'll set up multiple retries for subscriptions that failed to build successfully to find whether to cancel the subscription after the last attempt. You can even schedule discounts or partial payments. So say, you know, it failed and then we said, wait X amount of time, try again, it fails again. Well, let's let's wait X amount of time and try just like half of it. Maybe I can get half of that money back and then try the other half after X amount of time. So really, really awesome for when you're dealing with lots of people on subscription products. I can't think of any other payment gateway that allows us to do that right here. So cool. So I would maybe even set, set mine up to do all my subscription products through here. I, if any of you have ever managed subscription products through Stripe, it is not fun. And this makes it really easy. Also, uh, with this connected to ClickFunnels 2.0, we'll get into this when we build out customer centers. They can We can set it up and choose for certain products, certain subscription products, whether or not we want to allow them to self-manage their subscription products. So we can say, you know, let them come in and change their credit card on this purchase. Let them come in and cancel this whenever they want. Instead of creating support tickets, instead of creating load on my team, they can just self-manage their subscriptions on their own, which is good for a number of reasons. But tons of great features in here. Just keep in mind, 
Um, some of the fancier ones, like the one that I just set up with automation rules can uh, cost additional percentages, but they are all super fair. And I wanted to show that real quickly. So if you go to, oh, sorry, that's Stripe's uh, pricing. If you go to, where was it? Learn more about pricing right here. Let's click on that. So there are certain percentages for subscription products, automation rules. Um, we're not going to activate that right now. Where was it? Let me find, okay, here it is. So if you click the little help button and search pricing, there's a pri pricing policy here where it goes through everything. Subscriptions are 0.5 per reoccurring transaction with the automation rules. Like I just set up would be additional 5.5%. Bundling subscriptions and automation rules, you can do an additional 5%. So there's all these pro features that add on percentages. Um, and then you'll see, right, if we used uh, payment AI on its own, 0% per transaction plus your regular fees. Any other one is basically 1% plus, you know, the, the fees from those specific gateways. So if I did Stripe, it'd be like the Stripe fees plus the 1% because it came through um, payment.ai. But if you go to additional fees here, it should show us, okay, so here is all the fees. And I went through all this. It's basically the same as Stripe, which is pretty standard for sales online. And it goes through every country and the differences. So I checked mostly for Canada and the US. If you live in another country, compare these to some of the ones that you already use. Maybe it makes more, maybe it ends up making more sense for you to just go all the way through Stripe or PayPal or whichever one you want to use on the back end of payment AI. But there you have it, guys. This is you know, it's really just the hardest part with this one is getting all your information together. So gather up any documents and things you need like that. And then just really go through their little setup. I will tell you as well that each um, setup is per workspace. So if I have this one set up on this workspace, I have another workspace in here, right? If I go to this other workspace and set it up, um, I have to set up a whole different account and you can only use the email once. So you'll have to use a second email to set up an additional account on a different workspace. There you have it guys, get it set up. You want to have the setup ahead of creating order forms. You just want this to be out of the way so that once you start building your funnels, it is just there and ready to go. You can now add products. You can set up order forms. You can test your order forms. You just have to have it at least connected. I can't get paid out yet. Once I verify those documents, then I'll be able to get paid out. But there you have it. That is step number two in CF 2.0 step-by-step. We now have a domain connected and we have our payment integration connected. Join me over in step three. We'll look at the next thing, which is going to be our marketing settings. Our marketing settings are going to allow us to be able to send automated emails from within our account. Those are the three big things that I would connect before I build anything because then they're just out of the way and we never really have to come back. We can kind of set them and forget them. But there you have it, guys. I'll see you over in the next video. Bye, everybody.